Hello, Internet! Gino, aka That Pinguino, here again with another deep look. This time, I'm going to be taking a look at The Witcher 2, and I'm going to be focusing on the story, the setting, and the tone of The Witcher 2. So, just so you know, if you don't want spoilers for the end of Act 2 and for Act 1, basically the first two-thirds of this game, cut out now. Um, I'm going to be playing through the end of Act 2, and so, if you don't want to have, if, particularly Roche's path, um, if you don't want that spoiled, don't watch. All I understand. If you do, hope you enjoy. So, the thing that sets the world of The Witcher 2 apart from many other fantasy properties is that it takes the ordinary fantasy tropes, your elves and your dwarves and all that stuff, and it puts all those tropes, wizards and all that stuff, into a world that is pretty realistic for the most part. Um, there is no capital G good, there is no capital E evil in this world. Um, all of the people that you kill and oppose, they could have been your allies very easily if circumstances were different. Um, people on your side do terrible things, people against you do terrible things. It is not one person is in the righteous right all the time and another person is committing atrocities for no particular reason. There's no Sauron here. You're not going to see a giant eyeball that just likes killing folk. You're not going to see a Darkspawn, like in uh, Dragon Age, that just is some malevolent force that rises up that you have to oppose. It's not like there's a zombie force that killing, killing them is just okay and that's what you need to do. Um, in the world of The Witcher, killing people has consequences. Um, killing enemies has consequences. When your allies die, there are consequences. And it is that sort of setting. It is very um, Game of Thronesy in its general tone of people betraying people all the time, uh, all sorts of conflicts, people jockeying for position and power. But in the world of The Witcher, there's a lot more racial politics than I guess there is in the in Game of Thrones. I'd be less surprised and the, to find you amongst the characters are less cartoonish than they are in something like Game of Thrones. For example, Yorvith here. He is a elvish freedom fighter. He is the leader of the Soyatel, um, which is a group of elves that are fighting for an elevation of elvish role in society. Um, Non-humans, like elves and dwarves, are looked down upon in the world of the Witcher. Even Witchers, which are kind of a mutant race of monster hunters, they're looked down upon in this world. So Yorvith and his Skoyatel fight for the rights of non-humans. Um, in order to do that, they kill a bunch of humans and they oppose you for much of the first disc of, well, Act 1 of this game. And so, you fight against them, you kill plenty of Skoyatel, just because they happen to be in your way for uh, Geralt's particular mission in this game. Um, in terms of other characters that are multifaceted, you've got Vernon Roche, who is a... He's basically a secret police member of um, Temeria. He is looking for the murder of the king, King Foltest. Um, Geralt is believed to be the murderer, and that is what brings you into his employ. And look, Roche is, he's a torturer. He murders people. He does what he needs to do for Temeria. He believes that everything he's doing is for the good of Temeria. And so, it's kind of hard to fault him for trying to save his, his country and trying to keep his, uh, his people safe. But in order to do that, he straight up kills people who might not need to be killed. Um, he tortures Geralt at the beginning of the game. Uh, that's what basically sets you on your way. Um, the only person who's even close to just evil for evil's sake is a character, um, Lorito, who is, uh, he is a commandant of the very first area that you go into in The Witcher, and he is basically a greedy, what, commandant. He, he abuses the ta the process of taxes, he kidnaps people, he kills elves, not just because they are endangering his town, but also because he's super racist or speciesist. 
Um, and so he is someone you eventually oppose, and there's good reason he does almost nothing that is worth the suffering he causes. So other than him, though, you are dealing with a lot of people that happen to be opposed, but were the circumstances different, you could see yourself on their side. Um, that extends into Act 2, where you deal with a gigantic curse that occurs. And one of my favorite lines is said by King Henselt, who is the person who I happen to align with because I chose Rosher's path. Um, there's a gigantic curse that raises a whole bunch of soldiers from the dead. And uh, when that happens, he's just like, oh, this magical bullshit. Someone just deal with this magical bullshit so I can go back to my war. Um, he is at war with a woman who is... She slayed a dragon, and so she is rising up again for non-humans against Henselt, who is the king of the country of Kedwin, and he is warring with her because he wants to gain control of the city of Bergen that she has set up camp in. Uh, he wants control of this area for his people. There's King Henselt right there, and I happen to pick his side. Um, he is a very bad man. We're gonna learn some bad things he's done. He betrays you. Uh, I helped him, I Where saved him they? from a curse that he incurred because he burned a sorceress Tell at the stake. Me, don't um, make me laugh. Who didn't, let me have your who deserved it and didn't deserve it. Uh, no. She killed all of the soldiers that were involved in the battle that, uh, basically all of the spirit soldiers that you deal with are spirit soldiers because she, this sorceress burned them to death because if King Consult won the battle decisively, um, he would have basically destroyed life for uh, sorceresses and magical folk. And so she rigged the battle so that he would not win it decisively. And she paid for her crimes against the crown with her life um, and cursed him as a result. But King Hensel burned her at the stake because she murdered his soldiers and killed hundreds of people who were fighting an honorable war. So you get this situation where King Hensel does terrible things. He is a monster by a lot of a lot of uh, standards, but he is beloved by his soldiers. Um, he burned this woman at the stake because she killed his soldiers. Um, the main issue you have with King Hensel is he basically wants what is best for his country over what. Uh, you would prefer him to do. Uh, he betrays you in order to fight this battle that is currently unfolding. Um, now I have to beat him up with his guards, which is a little difficult to talk and do at the same time, but I'll do it. I'll manage somehow. Um, the other big moral dilemmas you have, um, well, Geralt, for example, he's another person who, were he not necessarily uh, indebted to king, to the king. Um, if he did not need the king's help, he probably would not aid him in uh, a lot of the stuff that goes on. You actually end up fighting alongside King Hensolt and helping his army a little bit. And like I said, he's a pretty reprehensible dude and you're fighting on his side because you happen to need his help. Um, you save his life multiple times over. Um, Geralt is mostly fighting for his loved ones and people who he cares about him. And oftentimes he makes decisions that favor the people he cares about at the expense of nations, at the expense of politics. And so no one's really free of cul culpability in this game. Uh, you do, you kill people who do not deserve it uh, because you think that that's what's right. Um, people are killed in front of you for basically no good reason and it is balancing what is the ultimate good and ultimate evil what you think will help the nation or help yourself and having to parse through all of these things because there is no single choice that will be universally good killing Baron Lorito is as close as it gets after that there is almost nothing universally good for example in this scene right here Roche, you're, you're all mine. Yep. Uh, I have the choice to the take revenge crown, Vernon Roach is on to do anything. King Henselt for murdering basically murderer, everyone who Roche cares same. about. 
or Bernard let him Marino live because he's a king, for the and in this game, two kings have been murdered recently, Roach, and almost the entire north of the world of the Witcher choice. is falling into chaos because all of the, lead the leaders and the ruling class are dying left and right. Um, and right now I get to choose killing the commander of to either kill post is not this king or let him king. live. The only reason he should live is because he's a king, and he's a good king. Uh, he does terrible things, but for his people, he gains territory. He rules fairly well. Um, he is good at being a king, but a terrible, terrible person. Machiavelli would love this game. Vernon Roche. So, the first time I did this, um, I was going to spare this king. Uh, his subjects spoke very highly of him. I had seen him do, do things that seemed like he could do be you? at least useful later on if he was indebted to me for not killing him. He's playing for time. Um, it seemed like Let's he would him. be a good Wait. ally to have, Tell and all I had to do was not going to murder him. A new uh, world order, new borders. It seemed like the nation, change. the nations all needed the stability, and, and killing another king would just further destabilize you know this region. Saying. However, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. They want to Another the interesting thing, and mages and wizards and stuff like that, they are super powerful, they can teleport, they can, chain, they can curse people, they can raise the dead, they can change very forces of weather. But they need kings and royalty and money to survive because without positions of power to occupy, mages, for all of their might, could be cast aside and, and destroyed. And so they need royal protection. There's no force in this world that is completely above being killed and cast aside, which is really cool. It's not like Gandalf where he can die and then come back to life and then is way more powerful than before he even died. Like that kind of stuff doesn't happen. In the when you die, you stay dead. You can be super powerful, and it doesn't matter because you can still be stabbed. Um, so here's the choice. Let's go, Roche. He's yours, Roche. You raped Vess. Um, he killed all of Roche's unit and spared only the woman who uh, rolled with them, Vess. Our murder and rape royal Your murderer and a rapist. Too. So Every here's that personal flaw I told you about. King. And Vess, did she complain to you? <sighs> I thought and once she he says it. that, she squeaked like an I decided I wasn't bitch. going to spare him. And I'm not going to spare him now. I don't abide rapists. So, uh, Roche, do your thing. I'm leaving you two alone. So, if you want Machiavelli Squeaky 101, uh, a Fuck. king who is a murderer and a rapist Fuck. by night, but also you commands loyalty in all of his subjects and Enough increases his territory and keeps his subjects happy. Someone needs to die. There you go. And, I'll sleep and fortunately, forward. Geralt doesn't really care about pol he doesn't necessarily care about politics so much. And the one I complaint I have with this game and its story is that Geralt just seems to get a court with any king he wants. Um, he can seemingly go wherever he wants and no one really questions it, which I think is a little weird. And I also think it's a little weird that Vess, for two story, for Act 1 and Act 2, basically ends up in a sexually compromised position. Uh, as long as you stay down Roche's path, I think it's a little, it's a little creepy. But other than that, um... This story is just so believable. I could have... I made, a, I think, a pretty compelling case for letting that king live, even though he's so freaking terrible. And killing him doesn't necessarily make the world a better place. It makes you feel good, but it doesn't necessarily help in the long term. And so that's what The Witcher 2... That's the world that The Witcher 2 presents. Uh, it is very similar to something like Game of Thrones. Uh, no one is really a caricature in this game, though. Other than that, it's pretty similar. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed the story of The Witcher 2, and I love the world of The Witcher. Uh, all these characters have real motivations, they have real backstories, they have so much depth and texture that I think it's really a game you have to play more than once to really appreciate it. And there's multiple pathways that completely diverge, and so you have really good incentives to, to replay. So, that cold if you haven't played The Witcher 2, I advise it. It's a really good game. If you have, Maybe I showed you a little path that you didn't line. see. And, um, till next Why? time. What was this all about? Peace! It seemed